Good evening, and welcome to our new series, Lawn Side Chats. We've had Fireside Chats, Waterside Chats, and now for fall, I will be visiting different members of Concordia Lutheran Church and giving talks from their lawns. Tonight, I'm at the home of Paul and Kate Russo, who are longtime members of Concordia Lutheran Church. Uh, they both serve the church in um, many different ways over the years. I'm always thankful for their faithful service to the church and for all the ways that they've been helpful to the church and to me personally and our family. So thanks to Paul and Kate for hosting me tonight. One of the ways that Kate served our church for many years was that she was a Sunday school teacher. She even taught Sunday school after her kids had stopped being Sunday school aged. And I was thinking about Kate and about Sunday school because we're about to start our new Sunday school year. And it's going to be a different year, of course, because we're not going to have in-person, in-worship for whenever, right? And I just want to keep saying this to people, is that the church is not closed. What is closed is the building and our meeting together in person on Sunday morning. Of course, we all miss being together in church, but it's important to remember that the church continues on. Maybe especially for Sunday school. I've heard it many times over the years that people start to bring their kids to Sunday school because it's time for them to, you know, learn about faith or God or some people even say how to be a good person. And I want to say that we learn all those things first and foremost from our home life. We learn it from our parents or our guardians or our grandparents. That is where we learn faith. Sunday school is just a place to go to have those things reinforced. It's not the primary place where we learn about God. And actually, Martin Luther wrote his small catechism mostly for use in the home. He wrote at the start of each section in a simple way in which the head of a household is to present them to the household. In a sermon delivered in 1528, he addressed parents by saying, Every father of a family is a bishop in his house, and the wife a bishop s. I don't know if that's a word, but he made it up. Therefore, remember that it, you, in your homes, are to help carry us on the ministry as we do in the church. If we do this, we shall have a gracious God who will defend us from all evil and in all evil. Maybe d during this time away from going to Sunday school, we can recapture the idea that each parent is a bishop in their own home, that they are responsible for sharing God's love and grace with their children. I think sometimes parent, the parents think that kids can only learn about God by coming to a church building. I also think parents feel like they don't always have the answers and are nervous when their kids start asking difficult questions. So if you're a parent watching this video, I want you to know you have all you need. Because all you need is your own faith in God, your own relationship with God. Share that with your children. And be honest when you don't know the answer. I went to seminary for four years. I've been a pastor for 17 years. And I will tell you, I don't have all the answers either. When a child asks you a question you don't know the answer to, you can just simply say, I don't know. But let's explore that together. So in this time, I want to give you some things that you can do at home with your kids to help them with their faith development. And by the way, the Sunday school teachers are going to be making videos that will help you do these things with your kids at home. There are four things that I'm suggesting that you can do at home with your kids. One, say grace at home before meals. No matter where you eat, before you start eating, thank God for the food and for your blessings. One of my memories as a kid was my parents had gone away for a weekend. My grandparents came to watch us and they took us for a treat we got to go to Burger King but before, while we were at Burger King before we ate we had to pray in public it was humiliating but it was a lesson that before we eat we always give thanks to God two read the Bible with your kids this one can seem intimidating right what if I don't know what it means or what it's supposed to say it is okay there are lots of ways to enjoy the Bible, and you don't have to be a biblical scholar to do it. You can simply read a passage you like. For example, Psalm 23, Romans 31, John 14, John 3, 16. 
read it, and maybe tell your kids why you like that particular Bible verse. What does it say to you? The other way is to simply read the stories of the Bible. There are great stories in the Bible. The story of creation, the story of Queen Esther, David and Goliath, Noah and the Ark, the Good Samaritan, the Prodigal Son, Jesus calming the storm, and many others. This is actually how I first encountered the Bible, was through a Bible storybook that my parents would read to me before bed. There's lots of them out there. There's even, if you have kids that like comic books, there's a great Bible comic book that you can get. And if you don't, and if you need one, let us know. We'll send it to you. Three, prayers before bed. There are lots of great bedtime prayers that you can pray with your kids. Or you can just have them offer up an o their own prayer. Say what they're thankful for. Have them pray for people that they love and that love them. It's a great way to end your day giving thanks to God for the day, and asking for protection through the night. It was a ritual in my house growing up that you had to say your prayers always before bed. Four, read the catechism together. We'll be sending everybody a copy. The catechism has the basics of our faith in it. The creed, the Lord's Prayer, the Ten Commandments. And it's never too early to start learning these things, especially because we are not wor worshiping in person. That's where we normally learn how to say the creed in the Lord's Prayer, right? But you can start by doing that at home. And of course, the Ten Commandments, they are they're a great list of ten things that we can do in this world and live up now, and it's a foundation for how we're supposed to live. Now remember, we don't always live up to the Ten Commandments, and that's why we need God's grace. Also, that we're given God's grace to be able to answer the call to live them out. What they ultimately are about is, is us loving God and loving our neighbor. That is a lesson that we always want our kids to know. Those are four simple things you can do at home to help your kids develop a relationship with God. We'll be making weekly videos as a Sunday school lesson, so you can do those at home as well. Those follow the readings for that Sunday's virtual worship. Just remember, parents, you are the bishop of your house. You are the ones who are being called by God to teach the importance of faith. And I'm counting on you during this time to be more involved in that calling. That is just something I've been thinking about this week. I hope you find something in it that can be of use to you. And I just want to say this, even if you don't have kids or your kids have grown and left the house, these are things that all of us can do at home during this pandemic that will deepen our relationship with God. Thanks again to Paul and Kate for hosting me this week. I'll see you next week for our next Lawn Side Chat. And until then, may God's grace continue to shine on you. God bless.